Look, this isn't the ship I wanted, but even I gotta admit that they did this girl so dirty. Get away from me, you wicked she-beast! This thing just isn't working for me anymore. What the hell is that? It takes a special kind of disrespect to take the show's main love interest, who for six seasons put up with Ben's dumb ass, only to break them up in a flashback, and to treat it like a joke. Now, that is a bold move, and it should be no surprise that it made one of the saltiest fan bases since Teen Titans just a little bit saltier. But don't worry, it gets worse. As in a weird mix of good intentions and corporate meddling, beloved toy commercial Ben 10 gave us what was probably one of the most infuriating shipping experiences in Cartoon Network history. You know, the same studio that gave us Mordecai. Yeah, it's that bad. And after rewatching it, my biggest surprise was that they didn't break them up earlier. As while Julie deserved better, the actual relationship is a mess. I'm Sarcastic Horse, and welcome to the first in a series of videos where I'm gonna talk about shipping in Ben 10. I wanted to make this one super long video, but then I realized I have a life, so we're splitting up into a couple. So subscribe to be kept up to date on that, and hit the bell because, okay, I'm gonna be honest, I have no fucking idea what the bell does. Just click it, it's supposed to be important. Now, just to cover my bases, let's give the clueless crowd an idea of what Ben 10 even is. See, Ben 10 is the goat. Like, actually, it's 100% a toy commercial, but who cares? The original show is easily one of the best things Cartoon Network ever stumbled into. Created by Man of Action, a group of comic book writers and artists who pitched 20 ideas in 20 minutes, with the executives getting to decide which projects they wanted to greenlight. And surprise, surprise, the one with the most merchandise potential got picked. The show was about a 10-year-old kid named Ben, who one day, I'll say, I don't even have to say it, it's in the theme song. Love that intro, but yeah. Alien device crash land on Earth, stuck itself on his wrist, giving Ben the power to turn into 10 different aliens. Learning that with great power comes great haters, as every alien with a ride and a shotgun are now out to get him. Aliens are real, and Grandpa's banging them. And if that wasn't traumatizing enough, he's also gotta deal with racist LARPers, clowns, zombie clowns, homeless mune, this one weird animal guy, and this one guy who enslaved children to be his Christmas elves. Shit was wild, and I loved it. It was a great episodic show about a dumbass kid, his bratty cousin, and their chaperone traveling across the country, learning the value and not strangling your roommates. Not every episode was amazing, but it was an amazing show you always stopped to watch whenever it was on. But then, like all good things, it didn't come to an end. As the CN realized they had a hit commercial, and they were going to milk it dry. <laughs> After a respectable four-season run, the show got a sequel, and because they wanted to court broke teenagers, Ben 10 was going to become Ben 15. And they only regretted it immediately. Alien Force was… pretty good, setting the tone real early as being a little bit more serious, but also telling a more serialized story. Kicking off the show immediately by getting Grandpa Max out of the picture, forcing Ben to step up and be a leader as he has to deal with alien space Nazis. Visually though, it was a downgrade, as while the new art style isn't bad, it just never had that same oomph as the original. I mean, just look what they did to Vilgax. This dude went from the baddest motherfucker in the galaxy to random loot hoarder. And while this one specifically is a bit egregious, overall, it's not bad, but it's mostly just functional. I think most of you already know the drill though. New show, new problems meaning Ben has to deal with typical teen drama, like being responsible, sucking up to the douche with a car, and trying to get laid. Ben Tennyson, hi. Julie, I know who you are. Great game. Thanks. Power nap, uh, you were saying. Okay, full honesty. I don't really fuck with this ship. I've heard a lot of people call them realistic, which can mean a lot of things, but in this case, it's just a polite way of saying boring when you don't want to admit it. There are some cases where a couple having a more realistic approach to the relationship works. Lumini is a great example of that, as we get to see both characters change and develop thanks to the other, with the high drama being less important than these two exploring their feelings. But with Ben and Julie, they're just boring. 
I guess I gotta be positive though before I start whining. As to its credit, this show cuts out the will they won't they bullshit, which is an automatic W in my book. They just meet, decide they'd hit, and go on a date to make sure that the other isn't a serial killer. They speed run this shit, and maybe it's the miraculous blue balls, but I'm thankful for it. Unfortunately, the show was so quick to get them to the finish line that they forgot to give them chemistry, but we'll get there. The other thing that I like about them is that they throw away the other asinine superhero trope. You know the one. Every time I see a secret identity dating drama, I lose about a year of my life. This trope is fine the first time, as it makes sense. Living that double life would mess with your dating game. But then every time it happens after that, it's fucking terrible. Because it's the exact same thing every single time. I am not asking anyone to reinvent the wheel here, but the drama this plot device adds always feels cheap. The relationships are never going to be the focus of the story. These are always action shows, and 9 times out of 10, the end game is obvious. So it just feels like they're wasting our time. The fight should feel real, but it feels pointless. And unless your name is Spider-Man, this trope can just go away for all I care. And thankfully, Alien Force blows right past both of these in one episode. First date, hides identity, disappears to fight an alien, before it kidnaps her, and then Ben has to come clean about his body count. Which is great, but now they're just a nothing sandwich, and now I can't even enjoy being mad about it. I didn't need Ben to have a girlfriend, but she's here, and watching the show find new ways of making her irrelevant was just annoying. Even in her intro, Ben is more focused on fighting a walking apple update and then getting to know her. She's pretty much just waiting to get kidnapped and to say she's down for alien tentacles. They had this whole setup about Ben being worried about her not liking him for being your average Reddit user, but she accepts him and his baggage, which is sweet. But by credits, her being accepting is pretty much all we learn about her. This is where the show speedrunning their relationship really becomes more of a liability than a positive. Like, cool, you got your main character a waifu in record time, but we don't know anything about her, we don't learn anything about her, and it makes the whole romance come off as a pity ship when Kevin and Gwen are banging in the back seat. Making this focus problem even worse is that Julie isn't in the main cast. She's a side character, only appears sporadically throughout the show, meaning that you have to maximize the time she does have, which they don't do. This girl is getting outshined by her fucking pet. This is Ship, and yes, they are the best Ship. Ship is Julie's pet. They are supposed to be the interesting thing about her life, that extra bit of spice that makes her more than just Ben's girlfriend. But every time they show up, the plot is about helping Ship and Julie falls back into being irrelevant. If you cut out the episodes where hillbillies and racists are trying to steal her pet, that only leaves the episode where Ben gets knocked up and needs a hand as episodes where she plays a starring role. If you're counting at home or bad at math, that means out of 26 episodes, she's only in six of them, not counting glorified cameos, while only being a main player in three, two of which are about dealing with ship, leaving the first fucking date as the only time Julie had to build character and be the focus. Except nope, Ship was in that one too. Honestly, I've seen video game NPCs get more screen time and more personality than Julie. She isn't offensively bad. She doesn't feel like her whole life revolves around Ben, but you don't get enough time to explain why they should be a thing. This isn't real life where people can date for no reason. You want to make this ship work you gotta earn it. And they definitely didn't in the first two seasons of Alien Force. Thankfully, we actually get invested in the third. And by invested, I mean just break up already. Because Ben's character got fucked by the studio, and we gotta talk about that. Let's finish up with Julie first, because I don't have much left to say. I like Julie, but this show really doesn't give me a lot to work with. She has an alien pet, plays tennis, and stuck by Ben way longer than she should have, being his emotional support whenever Gwen isn't in the room. 
Julie serves the narrative purpose of pretending that Ben has a life outside of being a superhero. Looking back on the show, she is a non-factor in most of it. If she was just a side chick who does his homework, I would believe it. But even that might be too generous, as she's less of a side and more of a garnish, which is just a fancy food term for not adding anything and is just there to make the meal look pretty. It's a minor miracle that being obsessed with Ben isn't her only defining character trait, but she is a borderline token love interest. You always think that they're gonna do something with her, but then something never happens. It never feels like the writers have any plans for Julie outside of having her date Ben to show how much he's grown. He's that's the stereotypical teen thing teens do. And when I first watched the show, not gonna lie, it actually worked. I was excited to see Ben date Julie, because after seeing what a shithead he was when he was a kid, I was just happy to see him grow up. Watching him come back as this mature yet still kind of goofy guy and get the girl was a win on its own, which is what carried the relationship for the rest of the series until Ben's character arc got t-boned. And suddenly, I had something to actually complain about. Now Ben is pretty much a walking poster for why you gotta just put up with god-awful tweens, as there is still hope for them. As his dumbass doubled headfirst into every problem, most of which he caused, because he's an impulsive child with a super weapon on his wrist, and beating some respect into him was no longer an option. Thankfully, once he hit puberty, the former child star matured and started going through life less like a toxic typhoon and just more of a twister. His head was finally out of his ass, and once his grandpa got kicked out of the picture, it was up to Ben to put the watch back on and to start fighting an alien invasion. Ben is pretty fun in Alien Force, as he's still a bit of a dumbass, but he's still playful and sassy when he needs to be. Being made the leader of his own team, Ben finally had to step up in a big way, making hard life and death decisions like, is this copyright? It's okay, just call it a homage and move on. Ben isn't the most interesting character in the show, but as a mascot, he is good enough. Then season three happens, and everything went to shit. See, Alien Force, it was doing all right at the time, but it wasn't a mega hit like its predecessor, because, you know, teens are watching less TV and not spending a shit ton of money on toys. So looking to correct this perceived fault, the executives took a look at the data and realized the episodes where Ben was a kid again had the highest ratings. Not because of nostalgia or this was just a special episode, no, they took this to mean that people liked Kid Ben more, which means more people would watch if Ben started acting like he was 10 years old again. Which is a stupid fucking idea, but this is where we're at, and they cancelled Infinity Train for this child-centric bullshit. So all of Ben's growth as a leader gets chucked out the window once he saves the galaxy from the space Nazis, and his ego goes through the roof, erasing all of his positive growth and setting him back to being a lazy, corner-cutting narcissist, with empathy being a second language he never learned. He became the most aggravating prick in this show, with next to zero actual in-story reasons for this happening. And why this is so egregious is because you tolerate this behavior from a child character. Kids are gonna do stupid shit. That's just how they are, and that's how we all were. But if you're making a 15-year-old who is shown to know better act like this, they don't come across as charming, they don't come across as likable, they're just an asshole or a sociopath. So Ben's character got assassinated, and it turned a boring but fine couple into a dysfunctional one. Which is bad. At least I finally feel something. You are terrible. Now I'm not gonna say that the warning signs weren't there. Ben was never a great boyfriend, but he wasn't awful either. As I think we've all lied about doing homework to get out of a boring double date. That's fine once in a while. If Ben was acting like that the entire time, it would be a big enough red flag to make us start questioning why they're even together. We just went to dinner. She was thanking me for saving her life. Uh-huh. Yeah. They shit the bed real hard on this one. So Ultimate Alien is the third series in the Ben 10 franchise, which is a lie because it's just Alien Force. He got a new watch and Ben's identity got leaked to the public by a tween on 4chan. But now Ben has to deal with being a public menace and famous. As if it wasn't bad enough that every alien in the galaxy was trying to suck him off, now everyone on Earth is doing it too. 
reinforcing his head-ass personality, and now the former team leader has to get checked by his friends, leaving Gwen to feel a lot more naggy, and Kevin, okay, Kevin's actually pretty hilarious now that Ben's an asshole. You're either the bravest man alive or the dumbest. What? Okay, the dumbest. And Julie is just so done with him. At the start, you think Julie might have more reaction to Ben being famous. But nah, she comforts him, like all good love interests do, while pointing out how disarming nukes on weekends is nothing compared to calculus. Julie is officially trapped in a stock love interest mode, and we do not stand. The height of Ben being a shitty boyfriend has to be the tennis episode, where not even the writers seem to be fully on track with what they're doing. See, Julie's one personality trait outside of having a pet is that she plays tennis. And she's now playing tennis in a professional tournament, which Ben is late to, on account of him stopping medieval times from shooting up a museum. His cousin Gwen screams at him over the phone to get down here, only for when he does finally get there, the announcers single him out, causing a whole other scene. And then because he has to act like a 10 year old, he soaks it up. He's signing autographs, he's having a good time, he's waving to the crowd, making the whole situation way more painful than it has to be, pissing off his girlfriend and his cousin. But it's not enough for Ben to be terrible, he has to be whiny, because he could defend himself saying, I was late stopping villains. No, he has to give just the worst defense. You were late, and when you finally showed up, you made a big entrance and completely blew her concentration. I can't help if I'm famous, right? Now this should be the part of the story where Ben learns a lesson. It isn't. Instead of sucking up to his girlfriend or apologizing for being a thick-headed glory hound, he decides now, right now, after she left him pissed off, is the perfect time to leave and go watch a movie. Right in the middle of Julie playing in the finals. His impulse control is gone, and we are really stuck with the worst Ben. Here, why don't you put a sock in it? Whoa, what's with all the attitude? I'm Ben Classic. Miss me? No, I meant that literally. This is the worst Ben. They left him behind. Using his alien powers to clone himself, these three get broke up into different aspects of his personality as they all go off to do the three things he wanted. One is going to go investigate medieval times, the other is going to go watch the movie, and the other one is going to be a jackass. Hey, other girl! You're a terrible tennis player and my girlfriend's gonna kick your butt! I'm your biggest fan! Well, that makes two of us. I know they want to give Ben the excuse that this isn't supposed to be him, it's just the worst part of his personality unchecked, but it's not that far off. Is that really your girlfriend on the court? Hey, things change- Ow! And I think the worst part about this episode isn't when his clone is being a douche. I think the worst part is the end, where after all three Bens combine to defeat the villain, Julie gets her worst line. Ben, I know you were off fighting bad guys. I was upset. But I guess that's a deal when you decide to date a superhero. I know the Amber haters are frothing at the mouth that Julie gets it. But to me, this line is complete and utter nonsense. He has no shit. Ben has to save the day every once in a while. He's not always going to be there. He has higher responsibilities, and I think Julie can accept that. She knew what she signed up for. But this feels less like Julie is talking, and more like what the writers wanted her to say, because Ben being late to the game wasn't great. Ben bailing on the game wasn't great. That's not what she would be mad about. Come on, it's just a dumb old tennis game! Besides, she was supposed to lose anyway! No, the fact that Ben was being a dick the entire time that he was there. That's what she would be pissed off about. That's what she would be bringing up. She would be asking him, are you going to be better? Not that, oh, you have to go do heroics. She's already kind of accepted that. She can't change it. It's his behavior that's atrocious. This feels like a leftover from an earlier draft where Bin wasn't shit-talking her opponents and hinting he was going to dump her in public. What's happening up there? Uh, that's my... boyfriend. You must be very proud. Ben not always being there feels like the lesson they wanted to hammer home, but from Julie's perspective, how Ben is acting is way worse than him disappearing. It leads to Julie feeling like she's being 
to accommodate, which could be something they address, except shocker, it's never brought up again. And it takes Ben admitting he watched the stupid sumo movie during her game for her to get mad and walk away from the mess that is her love life. This episode is weird for a lot of reasons, but the thing that sticks out the most, besides Ben being terrible, is that the show is four seasons in, and it still hasn't figured out how to write Julie or work her into the story. But thankfully, she at least isn't being the jealous girlfriend. Oh god damn it! Alright, now we're really digging into the BS. So Ben saves a celebrity. Celebrity kisses him. Ben says she only took him to dinner as a way to say thanks. Just went to dinner. She was thanking me for saving her life. Uh-huh. And those pictures of the two of you in her hot tub? That was fun. Yeah, Ben can't be this stupid, but he is. So he's still hanging out with the Twilight knockoff, really wants to see his man crush, while Julia's being pissed off that Ben is being all of this. Are you going to tell him what you found out? We have that piece of insightful dialogue, but she does in fact do something. Julie Yamamoto? Good. Fight back. I like that. Great. Back to being the damsel. So yeah, Ben saves her, because of course he does, and he calls her his girl, after all the time he spent with the other one. You saved me. Of course I did. You're my girl. And just like that, everything is fine between them. Everything is fine. It's fine. So, I'm not going to say that this is an abusive relationship. But Ben is a bad boyfriend. He is negligent. He is never there for her. And it feels like his family and friends have to bully him into even doing the bare minimum. When I went into this, I didn't remember much of Ultimate Alien other than Cthulhu showed up and they had a random sword fight at the end. But going back to watch this, their relationship is just kind of the worst. They were fine in the early Alien Force. They weren't great, but they were fine. But they didn't earn enough mileage in those two seasons to keep them together through all of this. Every decision the show makes shows a lack of interest or desire to explore Julie as a character. She gets more screen time here, but it's only to show off how bad Ben has gotten. So when the next season started, Ben just straight up mentions Julie was mad and told him they might as well be broken up from how little time they spend together. Does he try to get her back? No, he takes that as a sign he needs to start making moves on the first naked alien to land on Earth. And this is something we'll see more in Omniverse. Ben gets a harem, just because. As the show really liked teasing the idea of Ben being with literally anybody else. The order of these episodes is also weird. Ben has a fight with Julie at the tennis courts, where she leaves off in a huff. But then they make up off screen. And the last appearance before supposedly breaking up is when she forgives Ben for kissing a celebrity. They could have reordered this to make it so that the fight had them break up. So that they don't have to do it off screen so that they can have their surprise incest. Look, we just have to be honest, like straight up honest. If this was really going to be a realistic relationship, Ben would 100% cheat. Let's stop pretending and just commit to the fact that he thinks with his dick. I promise I'll try. Then I'll try to. No, I guess we're just gonna keep pretending this relationship works. So, Julie's pet ship runs off to rescue his creator. Ben is a dick to her when she points out that they didn't technically break up. He just stopped talking to her, telling her to buzz off when she asks for help finding her pet till she's gone and suddenly she's all he can think about. And he's now willing to break the speed of light, but still can't sit through a tennis game. But I can't just drop everything whenever I want. I have responsibilities. I'm a famous superhero. Yeah, Ben doesn't deserve Julie, or anybody really. Gwen and Kevin are all here on her side. Ben is still oblivious that he's the problem. There could be an arc here about him learning to be less of a narcissist. But then I let my fame go to my head. I've been as big a jerk these past few months as I ever was. I don't deserve this. I'm a world famous hero. You're a world famous jerk. I really hate Cartoon Network for this. Julie takes Ben back. She just does. Truly the most riveting love story of all time. You promise you'll do better? He won't. But Julie's back in the show. At least now maybe they can do something meaningful with her. She joins a cult. Oh god damn. No, no, we're past that now. Damn it! You got me, shit! 
shitting me? Julie's characterization up until this point has been the smart one. She's a good person with a good head on her shoulders, who can see through a lot of the emotional clutter that leads the others to make bad decisions. She's smart, and not easily fooled. So her joining a cult that believes millions of years ago an ancient alien gave technology to humans and that the same alien is on the cusp of returning feels incredibly out of character. In Ben's defense, you're way too smart to be buying into this junk. Pointing out that this is out of character doesn't make it better. Julie's justification for this is that alien technology could save lots of lives, which fair point, aliens do exist, they do have technology. But the cult calls itself the Flame Keepers, holds rallies where they dress up in robes, and give displays of their leader's powers, and also their god is Cthulhu. This is so dumb. Also, they tease Ben going out with a different girl immediately after he got back together with Julie. She got kidnapped, and he thought she blew him off, so his first move is to kiss his yandere. And this plot wouldn't be so egregious if they didn't do it twice. Can't breathe inside my lungs. You never really cared about Ben. What are you going to do, kill him? If you can't have him, no one can, is that it? <laughs> Thank Catcher, we only have one more episode of this dysfunction junction. So, exterior, scene, airport. Ben is dropping off Julie, who has a big tennis tournament in Europe. He offers to walk her to the gate to just spend that little bit more time with her. Only for a hostage situation to pop up on the scanner, which Ben decides he has to go take care of. Now, if it was just that, I wouldn't bring this up. And people have been pissed off at Julie for being mad at him for saving people. But... That's not what happened. Come on, Julie. Serpent's come out of his hole again. I've got a tournament, Ben. You can go tomorrow. This dude had her at the airport, told her to come with him, thinking that she can just miss a day of the tournament and pay extra to reschedule her flight. All because he asked her to, and to go watch him fight someone while she would do nothing. Like, there is no reason for Ben to drag Julie along for this, Gwen could have taken care of it. But no, Ben has to be out of pocket, insisting that Julie needs to stop whatever she's doing in her life so that she can do his thing, regardless of how it affects her. Even when Ben isn't bragging about how famous he is, he still thinks the whole world revolves around him. Which is why it is so easy for his yandere to impersonate Julie. All they have to do is pretend to be nice submissive waifu and let Ben do what he wants and he doesn't even question it. Would that make you happy? I'll get you a snack before I go. Ben's terrible. That's just it. And I'm not gonna trash anyone that likes this ship. Ship what do you ship, just don't be a pedo. But watching all the episodes together, they fluctuate between annoying and boring, and it feels like they're just keeping the ship on life support just so Ben has someone to kiss in the finale. In the universe, though, these two are just a bad match. Julie shouldn't have to put up with Ben's shit. Ben needs to work on himself and realize, I'm not putting in the work. Or realize maybe, just maybe, he doesn't love Julie as much as he thinks he does. These two are a high school relationship held together by a pretty face, shoestring, and inertia, as they go through the same motions rather than thinking that they can make better ones. Add in the fact that every other episode has Ben being teased with a different girl, it really shouldn't be too surprising that they decide to break them up in Omniverse. But I didn't expect it to be this shady. Ah! Hey, Julie. No, 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 not you. God, you're the worst! Yeah, they break up over the phone, when Ben is having a gamer moment and Julie thinks he's talking about her. This is a joke, and I'm not laughing. Hmm, maybe I did break up with you. I was wondering why you never called back. This is a dirty way to end this ship that fans spent six seasons with. Just think about that. Close to 90 episodes were spent with Julie and Ben being a couple. Years of our lives were spent with them dating, going through all the worst moments to see them still try and make it work, and to make the breakup a joke. Wow. And just to add salt in that wound, Omniverse would turn out to be the series where Ben gets a harem, with every girl in the show trying to get into Ben's pants before fate tells him to settle for the worst one. 
it really adds insult to injury, especially when the producers say they wanted to do different things. These girls are the different things. The vibe Omniverse was going for was completely different than Alien Force or Ultimate Alien. And I actually do like the show a lot. The art style is killer, but this stands as being such a bad look. It's no wonder fans got so salty. But here's the worst part. The thing that will drive you insane. The reason some of the producers pushed so hard to get rid of Julie is because they thought the couple was boring. And I agree. Yes, they shouldn't have been broken up like this. And Julie constantly being treated as an afterthought never helped. And she should have been given more to do with a more fleshed out personality. They one more dated her. They broke them up because it was easier than trying to salvage the couple or make it interesting. But I honestly think that for most of the fandom, people hate how it ended more than they liked the relationship, as the actual ship in the show wasn't that good. But ending it with a joke was just the wrong call. I am not ready for the next level! I am paying attention. You're strangling me! Get away from me, you wicked she-beast! This thing just isn't working for me anymore! It was a mistake. Having Ben be at his worst, most narcissistic ending the relationship, that is a decent idea. But making it a misunderstanding that caused the breakup ignores all the completely valid reasons Julie had to dump Ben's ass. This shouldn't have been a question of why they should break up, more like take your pick. The fact that they broke them up off screen didn't help. The fact that they spent an entire season without telling us that they broke up while Ben was hanging out with his friends, and the fact that Ben never once thought it was weird that Julie never called him back for months, but he didn't even try to call her either. This is a hard ship to talk about, as it got screwed over by studio mandates and being passed between different creative teams. But to me, the worst part of this, the worst part of this moment is that it is in character. That after this personality shift, that Ben breaking up over the phone and being too self-centered to even call her back or to check up on her, that is who Ben is. Ben was never that invested in Julie, and you feel that. She was only there when it was convenient, and he would throw a tantrum whenever things didn't go his way. Ben didn't deserve Julie, and for as terrible as how they broke up, they still weren't good together. The show was never gonna do anything with Julie anyway, so I think them breaking up was for the best. How they did it was awful, and they should have put more effort into it. If not out of respect for the character, respect for the fans who spent years watching the show, even as ratings kept slipping. I have a lot of nostalgia for Ben 10, for this shit. But rewatching these episodes wasn't the fun time. I was hoping that I would be Julie's biggest offense. But it was 